Thanks for tuning in to Venture Connect Online. You are watching Life Science, Episode 14, featuring four companies focused on improving life through science and technology. Zerna Biosciences is a biotechnology company focused on the development and commercialization of its patented gene therapy approach called ASRE for the treatment of rare genetic diseases. Invention Therapeutics is a therapeutics company focused on improving the lives of patients with rare auto-inflammatory disease that affect over 25 million people in the U.S. Telus Therapeutics is a life science company developing treatments for babies born with brain injury. Uvision 360 is dedicated to the advancement of a fully integrated hysteroscopy and cytoscopy system to fulfill unmet needs for diagnostic and therapeutic procedures for the office. Be sure and book a meeting for a company of interest by clicking on their calendar links below. They look forward to starting the conversation. My grandfather passed away from ALS right, right around the time I was born. Um, and so I never really got a chance to develop a relationship with him. ALS is one of those diseases that there isn't really a true treatment. And so being able to see some of these new things like gene therapy come around is very interesting and exciting to me to be able to work with those people. The drive in folks in the life sciences healthcare space is what sets this group of entrepreneurs apart. Each of these entrepreneurs is also trying to improve lives, trying to help make better patient outcomes. You know, the, the clients that we work with in the technology space too, who are trying to improve life for others through the creation of software and applications. It, it is a deep respect that I have for, for what these people are doing because I think while they're trying to build a business and and there is a financial goal behind it, um, there's a lot more than that too. Good morning, good afternoon. I am Joseph Rees, president of Inzerta Biosciences. Inzerta is a preclinical stage company which is using its patented RNA editing technology to develop gene therapies for rare genetic disorders. We are developing long-term curative therapies for myotype dystrophy and Huntington's disease, which are classified as nucleotide expansion disorders. We are seeking seed Series A support to accelerate clinical development of our lead therapeutics. Nucleotide expansion disorders are genetic diseases that typically lead to progressive tissue loss. Life expectancy is about 20 years after clinical diagnosis. Unfortunately, there are no disease-modifying therapeutics. Patients with nucleotide expansion disorders inherit the gene that is too long, a gene that carries an expansion of a three nucleotide genetic element that leads to the production of a toxic RNA and or a toxic protein that leads to progressive cell death. Our solution is to destroy the toxic RNA molecule that is the root cause of the disease. Our therapeutic platform called Artificial Site-Specific RNA Endonucleases, or ACERs, is a modular system consisting of an RNA binding module, PUF, that can be engineered to buy any RNA sequence of choice and an RNA degrading enzyme, PIN, that will destroy the RNA. ACERs can be readily packaged into AAV vectors to create gene therapeutics. ACERs have the following competitive advantages. They're human-based, non-CRISPR-based, there's no competing IP. ACERs preferentially bind and destroy RNAs carrying expanded repeats, and one therapeutic can be used to treat multiple indications. Two examples are illustrated in our de joint development pipeline summary. A therapeutic for myotype dystrophy, ENZ-1, can be used to also treat Fuchs corneal dystrophy. A therapeutic for Huntington's disease, ENZ-2, can be used to treat eight other neurodegenerative expansion disorders. To date, we have raised about $1.5 million in grant funding for our research programs. Our scientific founder, has published a study showing that our therapeutic candidate for myotonic dystrophy can reverse the defects caused by expanded RNAs in cells isolated from infected patients. In addition, we've established partnerships for in vivo efficacy studies for both indications. This study shows the efficacy of our myotonic dystrophy therapeutic. The toxic RNA forms a tangle with 
pellets within the cell. We feel there's red dots in the cells from affected patients shown in the middle panel. The tangles trap factors required for muscle protein production. It is this defect in muscle protein production that leads to progressive tissue loss. The left panel shows cells from a non-affected patient with no tangles, and muscle protein production is normal. When disease cells are treated with our therapeutic candidate, the tangles are destroyed and proper muscle protein production is restored. Members of our team include Zephon Wong, inventor of Acer Technology, and Pete Cezani, formerly with Disruptor Therapeutics, where he had a pivotal role in the development of the first FDA-approved drug for Duchenne muscular dystrophy. We are seeking seed Series A support to accelerate development of programs to complete lead therapeutic candidate selection, to initiate and complete in vivo efficacy and IND enabling studies, to establish partnerships and approvals required for clinical studies. Over the next three years, we plan to transition from the research phase, which includes lead candidate selection, in vivo efficacy, and gene delivery partner identification, to preclinical stage, uh, the IND enabling stage, with the goal of initiating phase one safety trials in patients by late 2022. Throughout this process, we will engage regulatory agencies and patient advocacy groups to ensure we meet the requirements and needs for effective clinical development. We are currently pursuing these studies using grant funding. With your support, we will be able to meet our timeline for bringing our promising disease-modifying therapeutic to patients. Starting grad school, I spend much of my studies basically developing new therapies for ischemic stroke. In research, in basic research, you have the great idea of how to move something forward that may lead to um, a treatment that may help us or others down the line. But what tends to happen, you tend to leave that project behind at some point. That idea that may not otherwise, you know, get out there. And once you realize that and you want to push forward with what you want to do more as far as seeing that therapy to market or something to that effect, you kind of want to go into a more, into a position that brings you closer to that end product. For me, I decided to go to law school. My current work basically focuses on, you know, having, you know, new technologies being presented to me, developing a patent strategy, having investors come and invest into that idea, build a company, and that company will then spin out a product that could help, you know, many uh, different individuals. We're actually, you know, on the side of startup companies with new ideas to bring those ideas to the bedside of patients. Hi, thanks for watching this in isolation. I'm Anil Goyal, CEO of Invention Therapeutics, a company developing immune interventions for auto-inflammatory diseases such as the Stills disease, a rare disease that causes systemic arthritis and mortality due to cytokine syndrome, and highly prevalent diseases such as gout, Alzheimer's, and others mentioned here. Also, the current COVID pandemic, where it's actually the hyperinflammation and the cytokine syndrome that leads to death. All of these diseases have a common mechanism called the inflammasome, a protein complex that assembles in immune cells as shown in this clip and leads to production of cytokines such as IL-1 beta, IL-18, as well as cell death that eventually cause inflammation. Our strategy is to block this inflammasome assembly with small molecules and inhibit the cytokines leading to the control of inflammation. There is significant interest, uh, scientific interest and validation as well as MNA and venture interest in this field. However, these first generation companies are focused on a single inflammasome out of the many inflammasomes that are involved in disease. The single inflammasome that everybody is focused on is NLRP3. Increasing data shows that many diseases that I listed earlier have inflammasomes other than P3, such as AIM2, P1, and C4. Just P3 inhibition will not control inflammation caused by these other inflammasomes. Thus, invention strategies to develop small molecules against common proteins across these inflammasomes. We have two programs, one that targets the ASC protein shown in green, 
And the second is a program that targets the Procast space recruitment to the filaments. I'll show you some very exciting data for our second program. Our molecule 117 is a small molecule, druggable molecule, where we have shown that it inhibits IL-1 beta formation from P3 inflammasomes, from N2 inflammasomes, from P1 inflammasome, as well as C4 inflammasome of cytokines. So we have a multi-inflammasome inhibitor that works across these four inflammasomes. This molecule inhibits not only IL-1 beta, but also IL-18 and prevents cell death. Very excited to take this molecule along with our second program very rapidly forward and expect animal data in the next few months. So we're currently raising a seed funding to take these molecules further into development and identify two drug candidates for pre-IND development, at which point we would raise a series A that would take us all the way to early clinical trials. To tell you a little bit about the company, we were founded in 2017 at UNC and we have raised about $1 million non-dilutive, most recently alone from NC Biotech Center. We have exceptional scientific founders with Professor Jenny Ting, who's a world-renowned immunologist and a discoverer of many inflammasome genes that I mentioned, along with Professor Ainsley and Dr. Batchelder, who have deep background in immune cell targeting. My own background is more than 25 years in private and public biotechs, leading funding, licensing, deal-making, and accomplishing several exits. Companies include Ribometrics, where I did my first roadshow for, for, for Ribometrics, Serenex, I led their sale to Pfizer, and other companies such as Millennium and uh, Heat Biologics. So in closing, hope why this video, I have shared with you a glimpse of a very exciting and highly innovative therapeutics company, developing immune interventions for autoinflammatory diseases, potentially uh, for the pandemic, with a differentiated multi-inflammasome strategy and a team that is experienced in R&D and agile in moving in, in new directions. We are now meeting our near-term milestones and developing long-term value for the company. I hope you will reach me and we would have further discussions beyond these four minutes to, to identify opportunities to work together. Thank you for your time. And best wishes for yourself, your families, and your colleagues. Hope to meet with you soon. Thank you. When I was 15, I went through a year of chemotherapy. I was diagnosed with a very rare form of cancer called rhabdomyosarcoma. And the treatment was, was really intense. I remember one drug was called cytoxin, and it almost killed me. I was in the ICU for a weekend. It was a big year of my life, of course, for anybody going through cancer. Fast forward many, many years later, I am running a company called Story Driven, and we help people who are doing great things tell their stories. And uh, we did a story about a cancer survivor. I was actually watching the rough draft of the video, and he said, yeah, and I had rhabdomyosarcoma. And I was like, what? That's the same cancer I had. But it was really, it was surprising to me that like, he's like, yeah, what drugs did you have? And it was, it was exactly the same thing. He told me what uh, wasabi nose was, and it was this, it's this feeling you get from the one drug, cytoxin. And I didn't know what to call it when I was 15. And this is like probably 25 or 30 years later. It just, to me, punctuated the importance of uh, entrepreneurs who are out there thinking of ways to further research, to grow new treatments, to uh, look outside of toxic chemicals that we put into our bodies. I get really inspired when I hear about how we're going to be treating diseases in the future. And that's exciting to, to meet those entrepreneurs, to hear about their ideas, and to, to see their companies propelling forward through this network. Hi, I'm Jason Kraler, CEO and co-founder of Talus Therapeutics. We are a neonatal care company focused on the development of treatments for unmet needs in newborns, primarily premature infants in the neonatal intensive care unit, or NICU. Our lead compound was identified in human breast milk 
and is in development for brain injury and babies born premature. And to that end, we are raising an investment to move our lead program through IND enabling studies into clinical trials, as well as to develop our pipeline, which is of existing and new chemistry for CNS and non-CNS indications. My co-founder, Eric Benner, is a neonatologist and stem cell biologist. His discoveries and experience led to the patents uh, that have been licensed to TELUS. And his experience included the premature birth of his twin boys. His time in the NICU showed him the tremendous unmet need there is for novel therapeutics to treat brain injury and other unmet needs. His work led to the screening of human breast milk for compounds that would address the underlying pathologies in brain injury and inflammatory conditions. Our first indication that we're treating is white matter injury. White matter or myelin is very important to the developing brain as well as the function of the adult brain. Injury to white matter is the most frequent brain injury observed in the NICU. The most common outcome of a white matter injury is cerebral palsy. However, we can have effects on sensory systems such as hearing and vision, as well as intellectual disability. The average cost of care lifetime for a cerebral palsy patient exceeds $1 million, and there is no treatment for white matter injury. So we've set out to develop the first treatment to repair white matter injury and are taking advantage of the abundant neural stem cell population in newborns. These cells develop into myelin producing oligodendrocytes. And when working properly, myelinated neurons uh, uh, develop uh, into a, a normally functioning brain. And here we can look at a motor outcome. A, a wild type uh, mouse crosses the open field uh, with no problem. However, a premature animal suffering an injury such as uh, an infection uh, can have a loss of these oligodendrocytes that re results in a loss of white matter or myelin. In modeling sepsis-induced white matter injury in our lab, we can see the outcome in the adult animal is a cerebral palsy-like phenotype, a motor apraxia. Our compound, TT20, stimulates neural stem cells to uh, generate new oligodendrocytes and to myelinate those neurons. We've demonstrated this in vitro, and here we show the in vivo result is treated litter mates that had sepsis while young develop into adults with a normal motor function. Our company is now working with the FDA's Office of Pediatric Therapeutics and Division of Neurology. We've had several good interactions that make us confident that we can develop this compound directly into newborns. Our IP portfolio is strong with granted and pending patents. We've raised $2 million to date in non-dilutive funding and are working with potential partners to accelerate development and ultimately uh, partner these programs for commercialization. We are a neonatal care company. Our mission is to develop safe and effective treatments for newborns. And we're leveraging our understanding of the unique developmental biology and physiology of newborns and taking advantage of the evolving clinical tools and regulatory environment. We're also developing our compounds beyond white matter injury and necrotizing enterocolitis, retinopathy of prematurity, and bronchopulmonary dysplasia. We look forward to discussing our science and our mission with you. Thank you. Hello, Venture Connect. Hope everyone is well. My name is Allison London Brown, and I'm the CEO of UVision 360. I'm here today to talk to you about the Luminel DTX hysteroscopy system. Hysteroscopy is a fancy word for endoscopy, which is a small camera that goes inside of the body. And in our case, we're focused within the world of women's health. And so we are looking at the uterus, which is hysteroscopy, and the bladder, which is cystoscopy. So let me tell you a bit about our company, our system, and our market. So today, uh, women experience several different kinds of conditions, uterine, reproductive health, et cetera. 50 to 60% of the women experience these things. However, while there are eight and a half million hysteroscopies still going on, 
70% of those are being done in an acute care setting at a cost of $4,000 to a woman. And as we've seen during this COVID-19 crisis, certainly the acute care setting can become overwhelmed by certain factors. Um, even in our standard ordinary times, we have uh, times where ORs get booked and patients have to wait for their types of procedures to go on. So why is this going on? Especially today with good news of strong reimbursement is now available for the office practitioner and we have new surgical devices and surgical techniques that are very appropriate for the office, including six million cystoscopies that are done every year. So why is this going on? Well, the first reason is that current equipment is quite expensive. So this is a standard tower that is out there and this is what all physicians are trained to use. And it's quite expensive. It takes a lot of um, maintenance and it takes people to run it. And after being in the healthcare industry for many, many years, our entire team has over 30 years of experience. Um, we know that the office setting especially needs things that are practical, that are simplified, that are streamlined, that are giving them just what they need for both themselves, their patients, and also their staff. And so that is why we've developed the Luminal DTX hysteroscopy system. As you can see, it's very compact. Um, the box that is in my hand actually is replacing the entire Higher brain of a tower and we have a hybrid system of a reusable scope with a line of disposable sheets and those sheets allow the physician to perform different types of procedures depending on what they want to do. So what have we achieved? First and foremost, we have a 510K dual indication of hysteroscopy and cystoscopy that was granted in 2018 and we have both diagnostic and operative. We have systems on the market. We did a small regional launch. We have IP. We have two additional 510Ks that were approved last year for new sheets that are on the market. And finally, we are pleased to announce that we are advancing our market position nationwide this year. And we were expecting a nationwide launch in second quarter with Olympus Corporation of the Americas. You may know them as a leader in endoscopy and imaging. And so the gynecology business is now our new partner going into the office space. So we currently are raising a series C of $4.2 million. We've raised three of that and we're looking to raise another million and that will support this commercial um, partnership as well as capitalize on our contracts and expand our IP and our global footprint. We do expect to be cash flow positive by the end of the year and we're looking for all these things to trigger an acquisition with our partner. If you have other questions, please contact me, Allison London Brown, CEO at Uvision 360. Thanks and have a great day. Alexandria is proud to support the CED Venture Connect Summit. During this crisis, we wanted to let the Research Triangle community know that Alexandria is here to support our tenants, investments, and the broader ecosystem. As the premier developer of collaborative life science and ag tech campuses in the Triangle, Alexandria's team has succeeded in keeping 100% of our mission critical buildings online. We continue to be inspired by the heroic work being done by our tenants and investments in response to the pandemic. Companies like Greenlight Biosciences and Medicago, who are using their unique platforms to rapidly develop vaccines in the battle against COVID. Contact us and learn more about how Alexandria is building the future of life-changing innovation by visiting researchtriangle.are.com. sure to book a meeting with a company of interest by clicking on their calendar links below. They look forward to starting the conversation.